Hello everyone. Have you ever met someone who is totally sold out for Jesus? In other words, fully dedicated to God and His purposes. What does that look like? Let's explore this aspect today in our podcast on the prophetic. We want to invite you to subscribe to our podcast in our YouTube channel, in Spotify and Apple. Even share this with others on social media so that they may be blessed as well. And in today's podcast, I'm going to continue to share on the prophetic lifestyle on dedication to what's God. What's dedication? In the dictionary, it says the quality of being committed to a given purpose. And as a Christian, our highest purpose is to love God, follow Jesus, obey Him and all that He has in store. The ultimate aim is to glorify Him. That also means being dedicated to Him as a child of God, a vassal and a servant of God. And once we have determined in our heart that we want to pursue the very path that God has shown to us, either in His Word or through a specific prophetic word, we need to learn to dedicate ourselves to it. You know, when we are dedicated, it is depicted by our faithfulness and commitment towards God's assignment until He changes the course. For most occasions, the Lord would normally increase the sphere of responsibility and gifting. However, there are times that He may divert us to something else for a season of time that He has designed for us. Can I encourage us to be wise and prudent to seek the Lord, receive confirmation, before making any huge adjustments, get others involved in praying for you. But most times in a normal situation, your dedication towards the Lord will be received by Him as an act of worship unto Him. We live our lives to glorify God. There was once a quote that was said, what is dedicated to God is what will last. It's true. When we choose to say, God, I dedicate this, I commit to this, that will last because it's from a heart of commitment before Him. Jonathan Edwards, a famous preacher, once said in the number four of the 70 resolutions he made, he said, resolved never to do any manner of thing, whether in soul or body, less or more, but what tends to the glory of God. For whatever is built or rebuilt to stay strong, it must be dedicated to God. And I pray that we would do so as a prophetic people. So what is dedication like as part of our prophetic lifestyle? Can I suggest to you, it's a daily choice to walk faithfully, in obedience towards God, our Lord and Saviour. Remember that song, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. That's what it's like to say, God, you are my focal point. You are the subject of my worship where we convicted to devote ourselves to the Lord as a personal act of worship, presenting yourself to God as a living sacrifice is heartfelt, conviction-led. Romans 12 verses 1 to 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect before Him. So that's the first thing, where we say God is a daily choice that I make to commit and to dedicate myself to you. A second thing is being pliable for God's design and purpose. Can we be like that clay in the hands of the master porter? You know, when we are dedicated to God's plans, it means that we are malleable, adjustable, for we live to please our good, good father, our savior, our Lord, our master. 
We're able to live and do so because we have grown to be more confident of God's heart towards us, that He means well, even when we may not fully understand it. You know, friends, we sometimes go through this where we may not fully understand, but we've got to trust Him. When we say, God, I choose to be dedicated for you, to you and for you, then let's do so. Jeremiah 18, 3 to 6, it says, So I went down to the porter's house, and there he was working at his will. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the porter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good, remember, as it seemed good to the porter. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can you put your name there? O Liling, O William, O Eileen, can I not do with you as this porter has done, declares the Lord. Behold, like the clay in the porter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Can we be like that clay in the porter's hand where God mold us, where God design us as he sees fit and we trust him? Jeremiah 1 verse 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you, I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. God has designed for us for various functions, whatever it is, to be a teacher, to be an instrument of God, to be a witness for the Lord, to be a worship leader, to be a laborer for the Lord, whatever it is, to be a, a homemaker, a godly homemaker for Jesus, to be one in the marketplace, you know, He has a plan. He has good designs. Let's consecrate ourselves to whatever He has called us to be, a child of God, a servant of God. In 1 Kings 8 verse 61, it says, Let your heart therefore be wholly true to the Lord our God, walking in His statutes and keeping His commandments at this day. And that has been also my heart's cry. Part of molding us is God transforming us into Christ-like character. You see, the ability to operate in the gifts of the Spirit is one thing. Growing and maturing in Christ-likeness is what resonates closely and deeply to God's heart. That's why we are meant to reflect more of Him in nature and character qualities as He works in us. You know, when we operate in the supernatural gifts, when it's overflowing with Christ-like character, that would bring God much pleasure and give Him glory. We are bringing out the best of ourselves because of Jesus empowering us. The recipients of these giftings of the Lord will truly be blessed because the gifts are accompanied, the operation of the gifts are accompanied with the overflowing presence and goodness of God. And that's what I found so powerful when we say, God, change me, mature me, make me more Christ-like. And with the gifts that He gives to us, that we operate in, in, in that as He empowers us, wow, it's a powerful combination because it will bless the hearts of so many lives in, in wherever we are located, the society that we are in, the, the workplaces we are in, the neighborhoods we are in, the cities we are in, the nations that we are called to, we are praying for and we are ministering in. It all starts from there. And can I also say, watch out for pride when God uses us as His vessel, as His mouthpiece. Let's not promote ourselves. Let God appoint and promote in His timing in accordance to His will. Keep ourselves in check and in humility. You know, friends, we are His sons and daughters together with so many others who are believers in Christ. We are His servants, His instruments. He is our Lord, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, and our best friend. Big, best, big F friend. Be a team player. Work with others. Allow others to speak into our lives so that we can be enriched. When we dedicate ourselves to grow in the prophetic, I want to encourage you, those who are growing in this area, treasure what God has placed in you. Do not be envious or despise others or, or, or compare yourself. Watch our hearts. Let God grow us. 
Yeah. Then you find such freedom in ministering. You find such joy coming to God. You don't just come to God because you, you need Him to anoint you for the ministry, but you come to God because He is your God. He is your Lord and you are dedicated to Him because He is your Lord, your Father, your best friend, Master of all, the Savior of our lives. That's why we come to Him, we enjoy that fellowship with Him. That's important, so we keep things in perspective. That's why it says Proverbs 4.23, Keep your heart with all diligence, for from its flow the springs of life. You know, there were seasons in my life, even until now, I've seen sometimes people who are so interested in chasing after the gifts of God. And that's important. God you know, encourages us to covet after the gifts. But one thing that always stuck to me is that I say, God, I choose to pursue you first and your heart. And in doing so, I pursue the many different things that you have in store for me to help me to be a better witness for you. But firstly, I choose to pursue the giver, big G, and the heart of God. Because when we do so in that attitude, in that place of humility, in that place of constantly depending on God, He can mold us, He can transform us, and He can pour more into our lives because He can entrust us with the little that we are, you know, continuing to uh, minister in more. He would entrust more because He sees that faithfulness and that heart that is given to Him and Him alone. It's not about ourselves being so good in this or that, but it's about pursuing the one who empowers us, the big G, the giver himself, because all honor goes back to him, not about us. It's always about him. Thirdly, can I bring up to us, be a cleansed vessel. You know, as prophetic people, sometimes our spiritual hearts can get clogged up distractions could come in, discouragement could come in, disillusionment could come in, disappointment could come in. This can all occur in our lives. So can I encourage us to be self-aware and allow others to speak into our lives, to watch our progress or sometimes our deviations and to actually hold us accountable. You know, when we are feeling numb or spiritually unaware or sometimes our conscience get seared, all these can taint our lives and eventually negatively impact upon what God has called us to be and to do. It can color the way we minister. So let's be an instrument fit for the Lord's purposes. Watch our lives closely. Our thoughts, our hearts, our speech, our actions, our motivations, be willing to give it all to the Lord and surrender this on a daily basis so that He can cleanse us, so that we can be vessels that truly honour the Lord. You know, every day I say, God, help me to give myself entirely to you and I trust you for your transforming work and outcome in my life. God, I want to reflect more and more the image of your Son. Lord, I am frail, I'm weak, and, and I have this and that, but God, I pray you change me inside out so that I may truly, you know, my countenance, my whole being, my whole actions and all that, my speech, my thoughts, every part of me, my heart motivations can all give glory to you. So friends, be a cleansed vessel. Can we say, Lord, I am yours. I want to be a vessel fit for your use. I dedicate myself to you. I give you my hands, my mouth, my mind, my being, my time. Father, here I am. I am yours. Do with me whatever you want to do today. Those few sentences composed by someone who is willing to dedicate oneself to the Lord's work and to Him. That's why in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21, it says, Now in a great house, they are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honourable use, some for dishonourable. Therefore, if anyone 
cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Don't you want to be like that? I want to, and I pray that's your heart as well. Fourth thing I want to mention in this area of dedication is to grasp every opportunity. What do I mean by that? Learn to be trained, learn to grow, learn to, you know, adapt as avenues open up to, for you within your local church or other means. Be trained, be one that is honed for the purposes of God. When opportunity arises, are you willing to take those steps out of your comfort zone? You know, sometimes we are so used to, oh, I'm, I'm good for this. And, and so you just stick to that. Perhaps God is saying, step out of that into that zone of faith in God and operate in the gifts and graces that God has accorded to you. And I had to learn that many times because I am by nature a shy person. I'm by nature a quiet person. And, and I would prefer to operate within certain, you know, the guidelines and, and all the boundaries. And, and that's important. Uh, but sometimes God would say to me, step out of that into that zone of faith. I want to stretch you. And will we allow ourselves to be stretched by the Lord so that more can be ministered to, more can be um, really come to encounter God for themselves? You know, break away from fears. Expect God to lead us day by day. Listen to His voice to direct you in the way you should go. You know, sometimes he just speaks to us about meeting someone, maybe a stranger sharing the good news. Maybe he prompt gave us words of knowledge um, for someone and, and we can humbly come and, and, and be operating in those gifts. Accept the challenge to be an instrument for the Lord's use even today and every day of our lives. You know, one thing that could hinder us from doing so is when we are fearful. That's why I talked a little bit earlier on, break away from fears. Fear of man, how people would perceive us. Fear of not being good enough. You know, friends, God is the one who qualifies us. For me, I know I'm inadequate, but for the grace of God. He's the one who qualifies me to minister as it seems fit, according to Him. Fear of unrealistic expectations. You know, sometimes we place those unrealistic expectations on ourselves or what others may have placed upon us. We need to watch those areas and, and, and be, how do I say, honest about it and say, I'm, I don't feel I'm capable of this. But if you see fit, you trust the Lord in working it through me, then let's see what God does. And that's where we come back to God and say, Lord, I, I need you. I cannot make it on my own. Or even legalism, you know, let's not do things like a Pharisee, that sort of thing. Or being religious, you know, wanting to be seen, to be so and so. But seriously, the one whom we are meant to please, we live for the audience of one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Or even being performance orientated, you know, it's not about performance. It's not about, wow, you are good at this and, and that. It's about, Lord, I just want to please you. And in doing so, may many lives come to encounter you, experience your goodness, come to receive you as their Lord and Savior. It's all about Jesus, the Lord, Master and Savior of our lives, not about us. Second Timothy 2 verse 15 says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Just as we rightly handle God's word, let's also rightly handle all that God has placed in our lives, His gifts, His talents and treasures in our lives. Let's be so. Psalm 119 verse 44 says, I will keep your law continually forever and ever. Let's hide God's word in our lives. Let's live out God's word in our lives. Let's live out His principles, His values. Let's be a people that would shine for Him in all that we are, in all that we do as a prophetic person, that we may be dedicated fully to His plans and purposes to his heart's concerns and to 
the very thing that He has called us to be, the very someone that He has called us to function in, let's all give glory back to Him. May you continue to grow in, uh, as a prophetic person in this prophetic lifestyle of dedication before God. Be blessed. Amen.